Today we're starting a new series that I'm tentatively titling Studios Undone, with a plan to visit the studios of other YouTubers and creators to see how they do things, ask them some questions, and maybe do a little testing and review of their space and equipment, all in good fun. My first subject, or perhaps victim would be a more apt term, was chosen specifically for episode one because to me, they're an idea man. And that's the type of person you want to have around when testing out a new format because they'll likely have fresh angles and approaches to offer that I'm hoping will improve this series right off the bat. Because something else I wanted to do with this series was highlight a specific aspect of that creator that I think they either do extremely well or don't get enough credit for. Today's guest is known for being a talented shooter, a fun personality, and for making exciting, inspiring videos, but personally, I think his skill as a shooter is not nearly as important as his profound ability to infuse his work and the genre with fresh ideas and carefully constructed concepts that not only require an ambitious determination to undertake, but a perseverance spirit to complete. I'm of course talking about Joshio from Make Art Now. Yo, yo, Joshio. Let's get undone. Gerald and Dunn. He's crazy. Yo, 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 you got me, yo. Hey, it's Gerald. Are you still going to shoot that thing today? Uh, yeah, that sounds great. All right, great. Well, I'm only about 4,000 kilometers away, so I should be there in about 15 minutes. Yeah, okay, perfect. That makes sense. I'll see you soon. All right, great. Bye. Gerald Undone. Is that a hot air balloon? <laughs> Whatever, come on in. Yeah, actually it was uh, Storyblocks that provided that. It's stock footage. Oh yeah, no, it's very clever, I like yeah. it. Because Storyblocks has an impressive collection of stock footage covering a wide range of subjects with unlimited downloads and 4K video. They're also amply supplied with backgrounds, overlays, and After Effects templates, and the interface is easy to use and navigate, and the clips are royalty-free for both personal and commercial use, so you can use them as much as you want, wherever you want. You done? I, I have one more little bit here to say. How many more seconds do you have on, uh, on the clock? Five, five, ten seconds? Storyblocks. Storyblocks, yeah. You're buying lunch. Okay. So if you think you could take advantage of a fantastic library of quality stock footage and effects, make sure you check out Storyblocks using the link in the description below. Because I couldn't afford the hot air balloon without them. That's a great plug, by the way. Just like me to you, that's a great plug. You weren't paying attention at all, were you? I, I, I heard nothing. <laughs> okay, so I'd like you to take me around and show me your space, right. and I'm gonna conduct my official review of it. Very nice. Okay. All right, uh, so this is where all the magic happens. This is my vlogging setup. Um, we have a Sony a7 III with a 16-35. Uh -huh. um, I got this whole little stand right here. I kind of stole a Caleb Pike. Right. Uh, plagiarism, yeah. I whatever. Say. I mean, look, it's not plagiarism like if you second. cite the bibliography here. Okay, so I'm citing my sources. Plagiarism, right? Yeah. There's an I before the A. I cited my sources. That's going into um, Adamo's Shogun. Yep. And then I have a Mix Pre 10T with T is for time code. Um, T, this is really T. good because I like how it feeds out balanced um, chant audio. Balanced outs, yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. So that's going right into the Atomos. And then so with one click, I can record synced audio and video. And then this is pretty cool. This is um, just, a, I don't know, is this like a 20? 20 inch. It's all on batteries? Uh, here we go. Yeah. That's cool. These are actually the best batteries. Oh, Indi Indie, Indie Pro. Indie Pro. Uh, I'll use those too. The big TV though, that's on mains power though, right? No, that's on battery as well. Is this from native cable from the TV or do you adapt something? No, I adapt oh, it. Okay. You know, when you get into soldering work, you work with what's called pigtails. And so this uh, coincidentally fits 20 volts or 12. So if you get those yeah. wrong, you, you, have can a good time. you can either <laughs> fry your stuff or, or it just doesn't work. Can you see the labels there? And just yeah. Make so, sure. is it clearly marked? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. It's a little bit faded. I mean, it's not faded. Okay. It's, that's right in there. I'll just, I'll just, I'll put a little, a little bit faded. All, All right, fine. A little faded. A little faded. This is your MacGyver travel bag or whatever you talked about before, right? Oh yeah. I mean, that's not really that interesting, but 
This is like, yeah, if I need to rig something, if I need, you know, like a five sixteenths, you know, slag on, so that the, comes on, up all on, the time. on the run, you know, <laughs> then, I, then I just throw that in the bag and I got it. This is nice. You okay. Sorry, I got to make a note of that. Falling. <laughs> Ow! There you go. Now you don't even have to hold it. <laughs> Quick that. release. And then Little you could head. like connect this to a beam or something or a car. You know, <laughs> snorri cam on the face. 120D? Yeah, 120D Mark II. Cool. Good to go. This is our, light. yeah, it's got a Fresnel on there, a two times Fresnel. So you use it for a little rim when you're. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually, why don't we go over all your lights? Computer, turn on practicals. So these are my practicals. I use these to kind of add a little bit of warmth to the shot. Also, it motivates putting in other lights as well. Next, I have a simple LED light above. This is just showcasing whatever the topic of conversation is. So right now it's on a camera. Next, I have a nice rim light, which is a 120D Mark II. This is just adding a nice edge on this side, adding a little contrast, making me 3D pop. Next, we have a key light, Aperture 300D Mark I, the original, and it's got a nice big soft box with diffusion and a grid. So it's really, really soft and nice. And last, if I'm feeling a little funky, I can add a little bit of ambient light. <laughs> Computer, turn on the time machine. Yeah, that's 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 Gerald undone for you. See stand sandbag. That's good. Give dual you... dual sandbag. Bal yeah. Ballast. All right, give you points for that. All right, all right, no problem. All right. What do we got here? Vanity mirror. Uh, yeah, this is Otis. This is from Burning Man art piece yeah. that I converted. But essentially behind there is a computer monitor and then a couple other small like Raspberry Pi LCD monitors. I use it for Otis's interface now, but this was the interface of the time machine backed with LEDs. And then this is the brain. And when we had it all rigged up, all these buttons would do something. They would activate the walls if, if you... Uh, Does it still work now? It still works, yeah. You want to try it? Yeah. Try? What Just turn that key right there. What's gonna happen? I, try it. Right? Oh, interesting. What is this? I can never get over the voice thing. It's weird. Uh, why do you <laughs> sound like yeah, that? I know. Yeah. Why do you sound what? like that? I. What is? What is this? That's a wave warp. Yeah. Just. What's yeah, a wave warp? I, I just, It's what exists out is here. Is this in real life? <laughs> yeah. That's right, Gerald. And you can have a taste of the '80s as well. Go to makeartnow.com. Two easy payments at nine ninety nine. What the hell was that? See? See? You're not gonna write anything for that? You're not writing anything. That's worth something. Mm. That's worth something. So this is interesting. You have a light attached to some kind of pole and then there's sandbags. And is this some kind yeah. of like motor We don't talk about that. Cut that, cut that. And we've got part of the time machine up here as well. Yep. And it's purple. Okay. I'll give you five. <laughs> six. You get six points for that. I can control those colors. Nice. If you can control the colors. Yeah, that's better. Okay. You know what? Eight points. Computer, turn off time machine. Whenever you feel like it. <laughs> you know what? I'm not. I'm not going to dock points uh, for I that mean, because that's. She works hard. <laughs> exactly. You yeah. know. I mean, everything that I built here uh, is on wheels. I know that. You got wheels on pretty much right. everything. This desk being like the biggest one. Uh, it's just super portable. You know, all the cable manage, management is run through one of the legs there. I like it in the same spot, but sometimes it drifts over to a new spot, and I'm yeah. like, oh, I like this better. That was even better. Yeah. yeah, and then I just kind of inherit that new the spot. The wheels are like an accidental yeah, evolution. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like when I built this, this studio, I knew that I wasn't going to nail like the placement of it for at least six months. Yeah. Like it was going to take a lot of trial and error of me shooting all these different angles to figure out what. I really like it. You know, if I'm doing more of the tutorial stuff, yeah. I shoot at 35. I want it to feel a little bit more professional. Yeah. If I'm shooting at, you know, doing a vlog, then I want to get a little closer. I want the audience to feel like more buddy-buddy, like, hey, we're in the mix of it together. You know, so I'm physically closer to the camera. I built this desk. This is solid wood piece uh, underneath. I have some LED lights. Computer, turn on exterior lights. 
Exterior lights isn't responding. Oh, you Please would. Please check its network connection and power supply. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. You got some outlets built into it here. Outlets built right in. there. Yeah. What do you got? Are these hard drives? Or yeah. Something? He categorizes every file that I've shot, like the folder. And we put it into an Excel sheet. And then we label the hard drives so that if I'm looking for a certain file from like years ago, I just type in a search on the Excel sheet. Oh, it's on hard drive five. Bonus points. One, for using Excel. That's good stuff. <laughs> Two, organization. You got a, you got a serious kind of like steampunk vibe going on here. Do you have yeah. like a theme to? Um, I think what I like to do is blend like old retro stuff with new tech. And so I call this Gotham Tech because it's kind of like it was like Batman inspired. Like looks like you ever been to like Six Flags Magic Mountain? The top, did, the tabletop. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. How it's like all like Gotham was like all rusted yeah. over. It looked like somebody forgot about it. Pipes. But and... but you you blend it with like the Batman Super Tech. So it's all old but like high tech Gotham Tech. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is mm -hmm. let's put this studio and the gear to an actual practical application. Let's set up an interview. And we'll use the same stuff that you use, the same lights, same everything. We'll set up an interview, and then we'll conduct said interview. What is this for? Why don't you just like trip out with people? Okay, well look, my viewers- My constituents. My constituents, <laughs> they know that I, you know, I like to take a deep dive. They, they expect me to really get in there and review and evaluate the technical well, I, features. So what do you have, let's see, what, what is on there? I haven't given you a score, okay? Get oh in. my God, it's a full on Yahtzee thing. It's not a Yahtzee card at all, okay? You passed, so, you know, don't show the this camera. This is just gibberish. There's it's not, not a, he's not actually, like, the, there's just like X's and O's and just, you basically gave me a bunch of kisses. There's nothing on here. It's like, who can read this? That, this I can read it. It's, it all makes perfect sense. Yahtzee bonus? Yeah, you, you got the Yahtzee bonus. You, you passed. You should be happy. You passed, you passed. Uh, all right. It, it's, it's true. Josh passed the evaluation. It's a great studio, okay? We great may have job. given you a hard time. Great job. But it's great. a great studio. <laughs> it's functional. I like the way that you've made everything move and adapt to your needs. Thank I, you. Thank you. I like it. The style is uniform. We talked about the, the motivation behind it, but I like it's consistent. When you walk in, it has like a general feature. I wanted I wanted something that felt like an art piece. Okay, so I'll start you with a real softball question, right, okay? Right. Why are you on YouTube? How did you start and why are you doing it today? I started on YouTube because I wanted a director's reel and like a, a sizzle reel. And then I realized that uh, there was incredible power and flexibility when you're not just showcasing your work, but you're also showcasing your personality and what you're like to work with. And so I went with just that intention alone. Let's do some amazing stuff and let's see if I can crack open some of my personality so that I can, you know, get more, I guess, more jobs in the future. So you mentioned in the past that you don't watch a lot of YouTube or at least that you don't keep up with your contemporaries' uploads. Would you say that there's like a psychological reason for this? Does it affect your creative process if you watch them? Is it a choice? You know? Yeah, I think it's just for me going through my path, whatever it is that I want to do, it's kind of a deterrent, actually. It doesn't, I don't get inspired. I actually get, I, it shuts me down. Because my mind is always just populated with so many ideas, and so I'm like trying to just put those into a box. And so I think if I see someone that executes a really good video and they do it really well, and it might have some tissue of like that idea. Then you have it to just, scratch yeah, that exactly. idea the Yeah, and so I just got tired of feeling that way. And you know, parallel thinking exists. There's a sure. million ideas that are shared, a universal, the same inspiration, whatever inspired me, inspired you. And so we do the same video. And like, just to, um, I don't need any more writing blocks. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so for me, I, it's just, it's better off if I just cut it all off. But I do follow up with, you know, the people like your videos, Philip Blooms, like friends, that I'm like, I really respect their work, I've let them in, then I will check out, you know, their videos. So my thesis for this video is that you're an idea man, but that some of your ideas are ambitious or that the concepts are really complicated. And I think that at times, you probably could have got your message across a little bit simpler. You choose not to. How do you 
how do you tackle wanting to do something that would likely be more time consuming, more frustrating to do, more work? Yeah. What, like, what's what's the mental approach to that, and how do you stick with it when it? Because you're probably deep in a video sometimes. You're like, why why did I choose to do it this way? Every you know? dude, every video, and it's not about. I think I just keep going back to. It's not about subscribers. It's not about building the audience. It's about what do I want at the end of the day. I want to build like this experience. I want to have, I want to sharpen the blade and you only sharpen the blade by doing the things that you're not good at, that you have no business doing. And you just keep doing that. And then suddenly you have like a really sharp samurai sword, you know. Is that what drives you through that yeah. likely difficult, like yeah. without, you know, wearing out? It, you know? Like the, the through line is that it's all connected. Everything that you do in this YouTube space, everything that you're trying to do, it's all connected to your past experiences and, and your future experiences, right? So you're gonna, it's, it's all accumulative. There's not, like you're not wasting your time. I spent nine hours shooting this interview. It's not being wasted. Even if you scrap the footage, you learn something from that, right? You like, it, it, it rounds your, well, your, your awareness and your, your skills behind the camera and your skills in editing and all that. So it's all, to me, nothing is wasted. I like that. Yeah. What did you learn from this debacle that we shot today? Ah, uh, that <laughs> that I need an air conditioning unit that's silent. <laughs> Gerald, I have a question for you. At what age did you know you were different? Uh, it was pretty early on. Yeah. You know? At first, oh. I thought everybody else was that's different. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I figured you thought you were normal. You I were was baseline. Normal. Everybody else must <laughs> yeah. be wrong. You know? And then it inverted. And then, then you're, and that's you're it, right? surprised at what the hell is right. going on. Okay. But tell me, what's my motivation? I mean, is this gonna go in bloopers? This is Gerald's fault, by the way. And then point this at, at my mouth. Oh. What's happening, everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and- Yo, yo, Josh, yo. You, you tricked my dog. This is gonna be painful. Hey, Gerald. Oh, wait, I didn't do it to camera. It's on wheels and locks. Somehow, I'll undo it. Is this quality content? You can borrow the rose if you like. Is that for like your, your grandma or something? Oh, oh, you got jokes now? This is serious, okay. Josh, we're conducting an interview here, okay. Hit that red button on that. <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> That's enough. Wait, wait, wait. I don't, I'm, not play, I'm not playing this game. I'm not playing this game. It's been too long. <laughs> but that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video entertaining or at least helpful. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, then cut a check for $6 to your grandma. All right. We're done. <laughs>